I'd like to welcome all of you lovers of wisdom. We're in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We're looking at verses 12 to 13. I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. Pay attention to the phrase, I devoted myself. I devoted myself to study and to explore everything. So Solomon is drawing upon all his internal capacity, all of his insightful factors, his determination, and he has one sole purpose, and that is he is seeking for truth. He is a truth seeker. Truth is readily available to us, but difficult to grasp. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So if we can know the truth, how do we know what truth is when it arrives. The empiricist says that the objective or the material or the factual alone is the truth. Others declare that truth is what we experience. They're called phenomenologists. And they talk about the phenomenon or our experience of something. Uh, scientists say truth is what can be tested and proven in a laboratory. The, rela the rationalist says truth is what can be logically and rationally contrived. The logician says that maths is the only way to proving truth. The pragmatist asserts that what works in real life is truth. The utilitarian, he states that whatever serves the greater good is the truth. The majority of people believe truth is established through consensus, that as long as everyone else believes it is true, then the appropriate thing is to conform and believe it also. In other words, follow the crowd. Truth is on the side of the majority. They can't be all wrong, we say. And more recently, there is the idea that truth is a narrative. Um, the idea that we're all part of a story, a meta story, and we've got stories within a story. And the truth of the meta story unfolds as we play our role within our particular story. Of course, uh, Christianity doesn't oppose any of these notions of truth. Uh, however, Christianity does overshadow all of these notions of truth, overshadows them with a completely alternate way of approaching truth. In my early 20s, I was studying philosophy at university when I came across Jesus' statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. It was one of the factors that shocked me out of my agnosticism and into faith. Uh, truth is not found in presuppositions or in statements or in ideology, or in a social system, or a thought system. Truth is located in a person. That's the message of Christianity. Truth is found in Jesus. So Jesus is saying that he is the embodiment of truth. If Jesus is the embodiment of truth, uh, and he is the only way that we can arrive at ultimate reality, that's the Father, no man comes to the Father, uh, 
then the only possibility of finding genuine meaning, that's life, I am the way, the truth, and the life, is to surrender to Jesus and give him his rightful place in your heart. Truth places a relational demand upon us. It's personal. Paul said, only one attains the goal. What he's meaning is that truth is not found in the crowd. You have to encounter truth for yourself. This doesn't mean that I have my own truth. It means that until I possess the truth personally, relationally, passionately, then I am living in a lie. And I'm living a lie. And my life is somewhat of a sham. Uh, Jesus, therefore, becomes our hermeneutical key for interpreting life. He becomes the one through which we can understand the meaning of life. He's the key to interpreting the Bible. Jesus is the key to understanding meaning. Jesus is the key to history. Jesus is the key to the future. Jesus is the key that the philosophers are really searching to find. He is the philosopher's stone. He who has the Son is free because whoever has the Son has the key that unlocks the truth and sets you free. Think about it. There are two ways that you can be fooled in life. One is to believe what isn't true and the other is to refuse to believe what is true. And if Jesus is the truth, then to refuse to believe in Jesus, well, that stops you from being wise and it makes you a fool. <laughs> yes, so wise up, choose life, choose Jesus Christ, and we'll see you again for more wisdom from the book of Ecclesiastes tomorrow.